Hello and welcome everybody to a new video. So this is the first video in a new series where I'm going to be making a line following robot, which is a project that I've wanted to make for quite a long time. Um, so in this video in specific, we're going to focus on the design of this little guy in front of you. This is the little light sensing unit that will be used for my robot to be able to uh, track this basically black tape line on a white background. Um, so yeah, not much else to say about it. Let's just jump in and talk about how this guy works. All right, this is kind of a proof of concept setup test thing here. Um, so I've got an LED here, I've got light dependent resistor, and I've got uh, my oscilloscope here checking things. So LED is just pulsing uh, one uh, on off one second at a time and the light dependent resistor is just connected to uh, through this ladder 10k resistor here through back to ground so effectively this is a light dependent voltage divider so by measuring the voltage here I can see what the output voltage would be as the light changes um, and that is what my scope is looking at so the idea here is what I want to see is with the light changing, so this light flashing, I want to try and isolate and see what kind of response I can get from the light dependent resistor depending on the lighting conditions. Um, so I've got these two little things to help me. These are little two little paper tubes made out of post-it notes. So I'm going to slip one over the, the LED and one over the light dependent resistor. And then what I will do is, so they'll look, they'll be something like this. This one will be the light shining out from the LED. This one will be the uh, what's being the light funneling down the pipe into the light dependent resistor. And then what I'll do is I'll hold a piece of paper like this. So <clears throat> the idea is that the only light that will be reflected down the pipe for the light dependent resistor will be what is getting reflected from the LED. Obviously, there's some ambient light in here, and having them facing up the way for this test, ambient light will also get in. But I'm hoping that when they're upside down, facing the ground, very close to the ground, um, we'll be able to tell the difference between the white and the black on the piece of paper. Um, that'll be the idea. So this test, I'm going to try it with the white and the black, see if that makes much of a difference. And hopefully then, when it's on the ground, I could see a clear signal difference between whether it's looking at a black or a white, and that should be able to detect a line then. So if I pop these guys over, you can see, I'll pop my LED one on, and this one over the LDR. And now you can actually do a thing here, because this is pretty much isolating all the light getting into it. If I do this, you can see the LDR will start to make a, yeah, a little signal there that looks kind of like a, I like a sine wave, and if I do it slow enough and let enough light through, you can actually see a bit of a signal there. So that's effectively the effect we're hoping to get. So by having this light source, obviously it's very slow here just for testing purposes, but in the real thing, I'd like that to be quite fast. And then if that's quite fast, uh, <coughs> I'd be able to get some signal out of this, which I'm hoping the signal will be different, whether it's looking at a, you know, a white surface or a black surface. So let's test it out. Let's put the piece of paper in front of it and see what we get. But we have to tune up the the scope a little bit. I have to bend some things here too. But let's see what happens. So the rest of the thing just kind of floating above. And we'll see what we get. And we're getting something there, so I need to scale the oscilloscope a bit to see it better. And let's bring it to about half a second. Oh, bring that out. Okay, so we're definitely getting something. So you can see it definitely has an on-off kind of pulsing thing, and that's what we're we're really hoping for. Um, to see that. But the real key is: will it have a difference if it's over the white or over the black? So if I put it here's over the white. And we see it's kind of looking at like how many squares there is it sort of 
two squares or so. Let's put it over the black and see if that makes a difference. And it is sort of making a small difference. Hmm. <clears throat> what was it? White again? Oh yeah, that is making a big difference. So the height also kind of affects it. So it depends on how much ambient light can get in. Hmm. Ah, it's very hard to test this this way. I think I need to make a better test. I think this works. I think this is having the effect that I want. It's very hard to set the paper just at the right height. Um, so that's kind of over the black there. And over the white. Yeah, I think I need a little bit more control over this to get a really accurate result um, from this test to see whether the black and the white makes a difference. Also, this isn't exactly you know perfectly black or whatever, so it's maybe not giving me the best results. Okay, I think this kind of is my rough theoretical proof that I think this kind of works. Um, so I'm going to test it. I'm going to make maybe a 3D printed little part that's basically something like this, uh, but it'll be... Uh, you know, actually structural, and I can measure things, and I'll have maybe some pieces, of material that can go in front of it to see what happens, different conditions. So yeah, I'm gonna try and build that and see if I can run a better test to get more accurate data, but promising. So we'll see what happens. All right, I've got a little bit more of a robust test set up here. Um, so I have this little board I made, uh, which has this new part on it. This is the real key of it this little 3D printed part. So it's just two holes, one with the LED in it, you can see flashing, and one with the LDR in it. And there's a little bit of length to it. Um, and yeah, that's really it. Uh, so, and there's a little flange on the end, sort of like a little hood. So the idea behind this is, if something's in front of it, like on top of it, like that, you can see a little reflection on my finger because of the way there's this little kind of deep tube here where the the LDR can't get that much light, if something's the surface is right in front of it, the only light that's really affecting the LDR is the reflected light from that LED, which should be coming off of whatever the surface is. So the theory then is the more reflective the surface is, the more light will get to the LDR. So the test really is between, I want this to be able to detect the difference between a black surface and a white surface, so that I can follow a black line, you know, on a white background, or vice versa. Um, so that's what this test is to do. So I have my little standoffs here, my soldering station, so I can hold it at a fixed height, and then I can put in test samples underneath it. And on the oscilloscope, we can see uh, the signal that we get out of it. So uh, I sped up the blinking of the LED before it was just blinking like on and off once a second. Now it's like every uh, 200 milliseconds or something like that so i can hold in this black strip and see what the signal looks like and hold in just white and then i can test you know moving it between the black and white to see what that does um so yeah we'll see what happens when we do that so let's test it out with the white strip first um so it's probably going to look much like what it is from this shiny orange background um but yeah, we actually get a little bit of a higher amplitude, which is good. That kind of validates the theory um, that the lighter the color, the more we'll get. Um, you also, in this setup here, there's about like an inch maybe between the bottom of the little flange and the test piece. Um, and actually, if I lift this up and just kind of hover it just with a small gap, you'll see that the amplitude actually gets bigger, so it reflects more, which is what you'd expect. For this test, I'm just leaving it down, so it's a bit easier to kind of see what's going on. But yeah, I would have it closer Yeah, in real life, so that'll give me quite a strong signal. Um, so let's flip it over to the black side. Same distance away. And you'll see when that stabilizes, yeah, so there's a, there's a really tiny signal. Um, so not reflecting much light at all off the black colored uh, paper, which is pretty cool. 
So that kind of validates that that works. And then if we flip it over to the black and white side, you can actually see something cool. If I slowly kind of pull it in and out of it, you can see that we get a change in the amplitude based on where it is uh, on it. So it's actually, if I hold it closer, you'll get a better view of that. So if I kind of slowly move it over the surface, you can see that the amplitude goes up and down based on whether I'm over it or not. And another cool part you can see with this is if I'm sort of in between, like half on, half off, you actually do get a sort of, you know, somewhat of a different amplitude versus on whether it's just over the white or just over the black. So if it's kind of half and half over, you actually get a, a different amplitude, which is cool because it sort of validates the idea that there's sort of a linear correlation. I don't know if it is linear, but it's pretty close. Like it gives me, uh, it gives me uh, a fairly like approximate uh, from looking at it, it looks pretty approximately to be linear to me. So that's pretty cool. Um, and obviously this isn't even you know, fully black. You can see a lot of white on that, you know, because it's just marker scribbled on it. So, um, yeah, so I think I can even make this better if I use proper black, black. Like if I get some electrical tape or something, that might work. Um, so, yeah, that's a pretty good test. I think this validates what I am uh, trying to do here, which is pretty cool. Um, so I think this is going to work. Um, I like this little design. I think this is probably what I'm going to use in the final one. It's a really simple little part. Um, I'm going to glue it down solidly. Um, so I think I'm going to make two of these. I'll probably make up another board and I'll have two of these. So there'll be like one here, one here, and then, you know, say the black line will be in the center of the two. And then as it veers over and back over the line, hopefully the signal changing is what will give me enough uh, feedback to be able to uh, control the robot, which is pretty cool. Um, yeah, so I'm going to make more of these. I'm going to make another board with a little, so it'll be my actual little sensor module. One thing I need to test is, so this is a, a little pulsing LED, and the reason why I did this specifically was just so that I could see it on the scope. Um, I may just use a constant, constantly on LED, and just you know pull the voltage on the voltage divider for the LDR to give me my give me my values. Um, or I may leave it pulsing. I don't know. Is there an advantage to having it pulse or not? Uh, I have to experiment with that a little bit. So I'll probably write some code on the microcontroller to test the different arrangements, one just always on or one pulsing and see, can the microcontroller give me consistent readout values? That's the other thing I have to do. I have to read this value. So at the moment I'm just scoping this value. I need to read it into the microcontroller to see what it turns out as. So whichever system gives me the most consistent values, I have maybe a thought that if it's uh, pulsing, that might take out some you know, it has a baseline level then. So regardless of what the ambient light is, there's a baseline level and then it pulses on and off, which gives you the signal. Whereas if it's just an always on light, but then always on light will always, yeah, I don't know. Always on light will always give me a, a consistent reading. So yeah, I don't know. I'm not sure what exactly I'll do yet, but that's another thing to test. So that's what I'm going to do next. I think I'm going to write some code on the microcontroller, test out different, the uh, reading different values, either pulsing or just always on and see what happens. So yeah, we're going to do that next and we'll see what the results are. So with the sensor module proof of concept, at least, you know, one side of it done, um, we're able to get some okay results from the testing. Um, it's probably not an ideal design. It does have some effects from like ambient light and things like that because I'm using visible light instead of using something like um, uh, an ultraviolet sensor, uh, like an IR LED and receiver module. Um, problem with those in my experience is that a lot of them tended to be digital and I wanted an analog signal um, to work with and that becomes very important for the next part which is what we're assembling here so for this we have two of the modules and you notice the way they're positioned they're on this uh, little board the idea being that they'll now straddle the black line so at either side they're reading white which would be sort of the zero values and then the idea is that as they drift, drift from left to right and touch that black line the analog signal will change to a degree of how much over the line it is and then that differential between the left and the right is what i'll use as my signal for my pid controller um so yeah that's what we're doing here um again still needs to be tested at this stage but that was the idea anyway okay i have a little test set up here to test some of my logic that i wrote uh for this so basically the code on the chip is now gonna take values from the left and the right sensors 
going to do like a an averaging thing and then do a subtraction, figure out an offset. And then what should happen is, as I move it, if my theory works, as I move it from the white over to the black and back, we should see it go from like some relatively close to zero number to like a much more positive number to a much more negative number uh, as it moves left to right, which should be able to then tell the the robot which way it needs to move left or right to keep following this line. So I'll kick off the code here to start logging some values and we'll move this and we'll see does that do what we think it's going to do. So let's try that. And I'll hold this up a little bit so that it can, does its offset calculation right. There we go. So it's just compiling. And there we go. Okay, so we're reading some value. So sort of a minus value, kind of in around minus something, 50 odd. And we move it over. And we get some relatively large positive value. And then move back to the middle, we start to get that minus 50 odd value. And over here, and we get some minus value, about minus on 300 or something like that. So. Not 100% accurate, uh, also the, the closer it is, the further away it changes it, so if my hand is shaking a little bit, it'll go between positive and negative, and if I drop it down it'll also do some weird things. So it's not perfect, because obviously my hand is shaking and I can't necessarily hold it perfectly at the right height as I move from left to right. But I'm definitely getting what I, what I wanted, uh, as it moves more over the black, the value goes more negative or more positive. And then, yeah, so obviously you don't want it to go all the way over, but yeah, as it stays there, it goes. So yeah, that works pretty well. I'm trying very hard to keep it aligned right. Um, keep the height right too, so that it gives me the values that I think that looks to be about. Oh, yeah, it's kind of hard. Um, to really tune this, I'll need to get a better test rig, but I mean, ultimately at that stage, I might as well just make the little robot right and then mount this onto it. Um, but yeah, okay, that's positive. Uh, it seems to be doing what I want. It's measuring the value over the black. It gives me positive negative so I can get a differential sort of analog signal basically of where it is in relation to the line. So that's exactly what I wanted, which means in theory, should be able to make a robot that follows the line. Cool. Okay, so I guess that's next, or is it? I don't know. <laughs> Let's figure it out. Uh, I might do some more testing. I might come up with a little better test rig so that I can uh, get some better uh, readings off of this, but we'll see. We'll see what happens. So I think that's about it for this video. This is by no means the end of the project. We still have a ton of 3D printing and design work and code and testing and all sorts ahead of us, um, but we're going to leave it here for now. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you might have learned something from it. This is a bit of a novel approach. Maybe not ideal, but I still think it's pretty cool. Um, so yeah, thanks for watching, guys, and I will see you in the next one.